the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My guest today is a talented singer, songwriter, producer from Atlanta, Georgia. His name is Ty Wan. Mr. Wan, how you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Oh, fantastic, man. Thank you for joining the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. And I am a big fan of your music. I found you, I believe, on Facebook, I believe. And, uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and I saw some of your videos on YouTube, and I thought I got to get this brother on the show. So, uh, thanks again for coming on the show. Nice, nice. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. We're going to talk about your latest uh, album called Signature Three uh, in a little bit. But for those who don't know uh, Taiwan, tell us about Taiwan. Well, I am a singer, songwriter, producer. Um, I was actually born in New Jersey. Um, I grew up in Texas, and um, you know, later on, found myself, you know, moving to to Georgia to actually um, further my my musical journey. And so, um, that's basically where I am now. Um, I'm trying to trying to figure out the best way to, to give you. Um, a brief introduction into into who I am. Um, I started singing when I was when I was five. Uh, my parents used to listen to me all the time, and and they started bringing me like all kinds of music to listen to. So I didn't just like grow up on on uh, R and B and soul music. Like I, I literally was into everything. So it was like rock and pop and everything. So I was like listening to Duran Duran and Sting and the Police and um, you know all the way from Stevie Wonder Donny Hathaway um, Boys and Men um, Brian McKnight and these, these are a whole lot of um, artists that I mentioned that, that, that have really really inspired um, me to become and, and want to even be an artist Mike, Michael Jackson was, was my biggest so um, I was a huge, huge, huge Michael Jackson fan. I still am. And, um, yeah, I, I, I love the way Michael Jackson put those harmonies together. And, like, that used to always get me. So, that's me in a nutshell. Okay. So, you uh, you, st- you said you started singing at the age of five. So, I guess music was just always in your blood, huh? You just, out the crib, just started singing. Huh? Yeah. Um... When I was five, my, my parents started. They, they, I got to go to a performance school. So, um, kindergarten through fifth grade, I believe. Um, once I got to fifth grade, we actually moved to Florida, and um, Florida was a little bit different. And, and um, you know, at that time, my, my grandmother was very sick. And, my mother moved there to take care of her, and um, after she passed away, that's that's when when I actually moved to Texas. And so it was, you know, it it was hard to, uh, you know, keep picking up as far as music wise, you know, pick up here and there. And it wasn't until I got to you know my teens that you know I got got my my first um, deal with. Uh, Fully Loaded Records, which was uh, out of California, um, and uh, that was an independent thing. Um, got to got to go to uh, Germany and and 
really learn how to how to be an artist. Um, I knew how to write songs, but didn't really know how to format them right. Didn't really know um, the business side of it. And to be honest with you, during that particular time, I didn't really learn the business part of it. I did learn how to be an artist. And I learned how to, you know, take full advantage of, you know, opportunities and that type of thing. But um, it wasn't until I got older that I started really, really focusing on learning the business side of it. Okay. Um, now you said you. It, I'm sorry, cut you off. You said you. Uh, you no, no, go ahead. You signed a contract in your teens. How old were you? Um, I was 15. 15. Okay. And how did you? Uh, uh, how did you get the uh, the attention of uh, of a music uh, or a record company to uh, to sign you? So it, it's funny. Um, me and a, and a couple of guys that I that I grew up with, you know, once we moved to to Texas, um, we formed this group called Simply Smooth, and um, we were just you know trying to do different things here and there. We, we actually won a talent show and then we got to sing at the Miss Juneteenth pageant in Emerald, Texas. And there was a, um, a person there who saw us. They, they knew the, uh, they knew the CEO of the, the actual label. And I mean, it was, it was crazy because, um, we got like his per. It was a relative. Let me just say that it was a relative of his, and and um, we had his personal phone number. You know, talked to his wife and all of that good stuff. And so, yeah, it was like a it was like a meant to be type moment. Okay, all right. Uh, so that's great. So you guys signed a record label, and then uh, where did you guys go from there? Did you guys release anything that uh, that we may recognize? Um. So we, we spent a lot of time. They, they really, really wanted to develop us. Um, we were really, really young and, and, and green. And so um, they spent a lot of time developing us and, and taking us overseas. They wanted to build us and um, never really had a song that came out. There, there, was never, there was never a song that actually was released and packaged and all of that. And it it got to a point where myself personally, I just was like, it just feels like a waste of time. And um, that's basically what ended up happening. Like I, I wanted out. Oh, okay. And when, when uh, what year was this? Um, That was, let me think, 99? Been, yeah, it's about nine. Years. All right, and you've been independent, or you've been um, actually, a solo artist ever since. Actually, I, I moved to to Alabama. My parents moved to Alabama. Okay. Um, I went there and um, formed a group called uh, Interlude. We signed to Universal. I actually um, we were introduced to Mr. Ken James, who at the time. He was going from MCA to Universal, and uh, those two labels were merging. And um, a lady by the name of Jane Jackson Harley, who's the daughter of the first, I would say, first black radio personality, Mr. Hal Jackson. Um, she was his daughter, and. Um, she she really believed in in what we were doing. She she took us to the Apollo. Um, we won on the Apollo, um, and so we then went. And then it wasn't the, the Apollo that you see on TV. Oh, okay. It was like the the the, the grimy one, <laughs> the one <laughs> that they do on Wednesdays, where you know people are in there and they they ready to boo you and throw stuff at you and all of that. Yeah, it's not it's not organized like how you it's <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so um it was it was it was like that. So um so we, we actually won and it was a it was a, a um a blessing. And um again she she 
had us come out to California. Uh, we went out there and uh, she was very, very, she introduced us to, to people. I got to see a lot of things at, at that particular time. And then went on ahead and, and met um, Mr. Kim James. And um, the funny part is we, we met him. We gave him the, gave him our CD and we, we left. And he had been calling the number that was on the, that was on the, uh, the photo that we gave him. He had been calling the number for about a week. And um, one of the guys in the group said, I don't answer numbers that I don't recognize or that are, that are like unknown numbers. Uh -huh. So he wasn't answering the phone. And he just so happened to be sitting there when the answering machine came on. And he basically was saying, you know, he was from Universal and this was his final call. He wasn't going to call anymore. And um, he jumped up, grabbed that phone. <laughs> and and, and uh, yeah, he came, he called me and he said, hey, I got a, I got this phone number. I mean, you got, you got to call him. You got to call him right now. So I called him and he said, I'm very, very interested in you guys. Um, I want to bring you out. I want to do a, a showcase. And, you know, how many songs do you guys have right now? So I lied and I, I said, oh, we got quite a few. We got quite a few songs. And I had to go and, and <laughs> I wrote, I don't know how many songs, like right after I got off the phone. And I got, got with the guys and was like, hey, we got to get these songs down as, as soon as possible because he wants us to come out in two weeks. And so we were actually at the studio and a, a, a gentleman was there and he said, do you guys have management? And we said, no. And he said, oh my God, I would like to manage you. I, I heard, overheard your conversation and, you know, I really like to do some stuff. And he brought some other guys in and we recorded a, 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 a way, a way better demo than the one. And so then when he heard the songs, he flew us back to California and, and we signed with Universal. Oh, okay. Yeah, we signed with Universal and um, it was basically like a waiting game. We, we were waiting to find out, you know, what, what was happening because um, it took us a little a little longer than, than we had anticipated and, and um, he wanted a song that could be packaged up and, and put out right then. Like, they didn't want to you know, waste no time. They wanted to be able to do that and then come back and do everything else later on. Um, he must have had like some type of pressure on him or something. I don't, I'm not for sure. So, um, it took us a little bit of time and they ended up signing a group called Jersey, Jersey something, Jersey Ave or something like that. And so he said, we're going to run with them first. And so we, we kind of just, just kind of just sat back and the uh, guy that we had as a, as a manager turned around and um, he had a, a rap group and they worked out some kind of some kind of deal for the rap group. And then that he ended up going with the rap group. And so we ended up with a different manager. And, you know, we were signed to Universal. So that was a, a big thing for her because she could then, you know, push out for newer clients. And so that's what she was basically doing. And then we started, you know, it was like, okay, now we, we're missing shows, but we're not finding out about shows because she's not doing her job. So then we had to, we had to let her go. And she turned around and tried to sue Universal. <laughs> She tried to sue us. She tried to sue Universal. So Universal, yeah, the Universal was like, you know what? We, you know, I'm just, we just starting with this whole thing and, and this is just a bad look and, you know, we don't need this negative stuff on us. And so they, they dropped us. Wow. Okay. And so when they dropped us, it kind of like, um, it strained our relationship. 
You mean within the group? Like the guys that, I was, the that I was in the group with, yeah. Okay. It, it strained our relationship and just literally ripped us apart. And I went my own way. And I, I you know, I just continued to, to do music. But I was, I was, I was really, really torn up about what happened. So it took me a little bit. And then finally I started getting myself back into you know, doing doing what I wanted to do and, and uh so yeah, I ended up moving back to New Jersey where I was from and uh I wanted to take on the New York circuit because my cousins used to always tell me if you can't do nothing here, you can't make it anywhere. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I took on I took on that New York circuit and um I used to see A and R come in from like major labels. Like every major label, and they had my photo, so I was like, "Wow, you know, they actually have my, they, you know, they know who I am," and so, you know, I gotta, I need to do what I need to do, and then I started hearing that um, I needed to not mention that I was signed to Universal at any point or anything like that because it was bad business. It made it look like it was something wrong with me, and so it was. It was hard. I mean, it was hard, but I was, I had a lot of fun, you know, performing and, and uh, making music out there. And then, um, you know, I started getting older, um, got married, decided to leave the, the big city, you know, to, to you know, raise children. And so we, we moved to Georgia and then I've been rocking here ever since. Okay. Uh, yeah, I moved out here in 2013, um, 2014. I signed with, uh, I actually had two deals that year, which was crazy. I signed with, uh, but I ended up getting out of it and signed with uh, Top Notch uh, Universal. And that, that was a lot of fun. Okay, so you went back to uh, Universal after... Yeah, I, but but this was the thing. This was a, a more of an independent type thing. Okay. Um, Top Notch is a is an independent label through Universal, so um, I signed with them. Like the the CEO reached out to me personally, and you know he, Mr. Marvin Mack, he's a really good guy. Uh, we had a really good conversation, really good relationship. Okay. And so um, yeah, I just wanted to do one project. Just to you know, see how how that was gonna work out and all of that. And um, at that particular time, the, the whole music business was changing. I mean, it had already changed, but it was really, really, really changing at that point. Because then streaming started coming in into play and, and all of that. And then I was like, well, you know what? It's probably better if I actually stay an independent artist completely myself and just run everything myself. Okay. And so, yeah, that's where, I, that's where I've been. Okay. So, um, now your, this is, uh, your latest album is Signature 3, which I absolutely love. Um, Thank you. Tell us about your first CD, though. Uh, now, was that, a, was that Signature 1, or what was the first, first CD that you put out, or first album? So the, the first album I put out, um, when I really, really started, when I really felt like I, I got it together was, it was called No Regrets. So No Regrets came out and that, that, was, that actually got me known overseas. So I started getting a lot of, of attention across the pond. And um, then after that, I did a, a EP with uh, Top Notch, which was called Till I Found You. Um, that song got me um, recognition from Steve Harvey. Uh, he played my song for like two weeks on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Um, I then went on to do an interview with Jamie Foxx on the Foxhole Radio Show. And, uh, you know, just, just started to get more and more noticed. Okay. Congratulations on and, that. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that. And then um, from from there, I then got into Signature. So when I when I released Signature, um, I felt like at that time I had really really found my signature sound. 
which was the reason why I called it that. And so, um, you know, I dropped Signature One, and I took some time off and came back and did Signature Two. Signature Two did so well that I came right back with Signature Three, uh, literally a year from the same date. Oh, okay. But Signature Three was um, was a lot more personal for me because um, I had gone through a whole lot. Which 2019 was a, was a tough year. So um, crazy because I had like a moment of clarity and the song just flowed. And I literally recorded that whole song in like, I would in probably a week. You did the whole album in a week? I recorded the whole project in a week. That's quick. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was motivated. <laughs> I guess so. I was motivated. All right. Well, um, speaking of Signature Three, we're gonna play. A, we're gonna pause right quick and play a song here off that Signature Three uh, album. This one is called "You," and we'll discuss that after this. Uh, this is Taiwan and you off the Signature Three CD. <laughs>
continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. All right, we're back. Uh, Ty, great song. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, you mentioned that Signature 3 was more personal um, versus mm-hmm. all your other albums. Um, and you said, and you said it took a, took a week for you to, just a week to write the whole album. So you must have really been feeling it at that time. Yeah, you know what? What I did was um, I started, um, of course, uh, my life. And um, earlier in 2019, I actually um, actually released another project, which was um, along with myself and, and uh, Sean Della was called uh, we called ourselves Smooth Land and uh, we dropped a project called um, Couples Therapy Session 1 and that that actually came out on on uh, Valentine's Day and um, it got me really really like working on that project really got me into a different side of, of um, my feelings and so when it came time to work on the Signature 3 project, I was a lot of, I was, I was still tapping into that. And so I just made me think about, you know, different things that I had gone through, you know, through, you know, relationships and, you know, liking somebody and, you know, all of that good stuff. So. Okay. Um, now, Signature 3 is already out. How, um, how is it being received? I, I think it's a, I think it's a great album. Thank you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's being received pretty well. I mean, I, I've actually um, gotten um, another radio station actually named my album Album of the Year. Oh, okay. Um, and, and to see the the finalists, I was like, wow, there's a lot of uh, great artists that were up there. So um, I was definitely honored to to see that. Um, Nominated for some awards in 2019. Um, I'm seeing seeing my name um, for awards in 2020. So I'm I'm definitely uh, happy. Definitely happy. I'm still still working on some things. Okay. Still, still got some some things cooking up. Um, I think for 2020. Um, I think I'm gonna take a little more time to um, promote Signature Three because I, I I think it's um, one of my best projects that I've ever done, and so I want to uh, continue to continue to promote it, continue to um, you know let people hear it, and and you know just continue to grow my fan base. Now, speaking of fan base, um, you said that um, previously that uh, you traveled over overseas, over to Europe. Um, is it being received well over there as well? Uh, do you do a lot of traveling over oh. there, performing over there? So, not so much traveling and performing over there, um, but yeah, it's it's re- it's been received pretty good over there. Um, on a few of those those charts, um, I've reached like number two. Oh, okay. One of those went went number one in Italy. Um, there was actually a remix to one of the songs called "Automatic," and um, that song garnered me number one in Brazil. And they actually created a, a dance called the Automatic. <laughs> yep. Is that right? They, they got a dance. Yeah, they got a dance called the Automatic that they they do. Um, I worked on on that particular song with. Uh, well, the remix song, I, I worked on it with uh, Two Hand Project, and um, they were real good at, at getting me footage you know, from from uh, the clubs and, and showing me how these people were, were doing this dance. Okay. See it? Experience. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of collaborating, do, do you write all your own songs or do you collaborate with others? Or who have you collaborated with, particularly on this, uh, on this CD here? So on on the 
the Smooth Blend project, myself and uh, and Shondella wrote that project. Um, as far as when I work on on my projects, I write one hundred percent of everything. Okay. So, um, but I, I've actually written for other artists. Um, I wrote the song "Proud Proud Too Long" for Christopher Williams. That one was a big record uh, at the end of two thousand eighteen. Okay. I wrote um, the song. And but for a public announcement, that one was in 2017. Those are big songs for them. And then I, we just, they just released another song that I wrote for them called Evermore. And uh, I was about a month ago. And that one's, that one's actually being received real well in, on uh, commercial radio. So commercial radio is, is picking the song up. It, it's doing pretty well. So... Um, I'm gonna go back and and do some more songs with them and and uh, as far as I know, um, I actually did three songs with Christopher Williams, so I know he's got another one that he wants to to release. So okay, now um, just going back over your bio uh, and from what you said, you had a lot of influences. Is there anyone out there that? You would uh, you would like to work with that, that you haven't had the opportunity yet. Oh man, it's there's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of dope dope artists right now. Um, P. J. Morton and um, B. J. Let me take some B. J. Chicago Kid is like one of my favorite artists right now. Okay. So I would love to do something with B. J. Chicago Kid. Um, who else? PJ, I said PJ Morin. Um, there's a lot of them out there. The Hamiltons, they're so dope to me. Um, I just just got introduced to an artist called Lucky Day. All right, where are they? And, um, Lucky Day, it's, it, he's a he's an artist out of New Orleans. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he um he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Um, he's his, but mostly he performs with a live band. A lot of the um, a lot of his music is is live instruments. And, man, it's, it's it's awesome. Okay, um, that's great. And so. We're going to jump into another song here from the uh, Signature 3 uh, CD. This one is called Motivation. Tell us about this one real quick before we uh, before we jump. Because it sounds like uh, writing the whole album in a week, <laughs> you were definitely motivated. So, Yeah, mo- motivation is, is like when you, have some, when you have somebody who motivates you. They motivate you to be great in every way. Um, you know, from... For me, thing just sometimes just looking at it motivates you, and that, that's basically what the song is about. It's just about the the love of my life motivating me in every way. All right, I like that. All right, well, we're gonna jump into uh, motivation. This is Taiwan off the Signature Three album. This is motivation on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. <laughs>
that table got no potential Wanna see how you do it with the lights on Cause the fight's on when the light's on Cuckoo butter skin smelling like a melon I wanna taste you baby Come on take me to heaven That's the way it do I can't keep my hands off you Closer. You know it ain't over till it's over And I don't want you drunk, I want you sober, sober. I'ma turn the speakers down a little lower little Cause I wanna hear you all up in the mix Girl, we started at one and now it's six Six in the morning, work in the morning Birds still chirping, boss now calling But you gotta tell them that you gon' be late Cause I'ma finish everything on my plate yeah. Ty, great song. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man, I I really like this album. Uh, I picked it up and I thought, man, this is a uh, this is pretty good. I'm surprised. I, you know what? It's weird because uh, one of the benefits of doing a podcast is I get a chance to meet a lot of independent artists, and I get to listen to a mm-hmm. lot of great music and uh, probably music that I would have had a hard time coming across had it not been for this uh, this podcast. So. Uh, I appreciate you putting out good music like this, man. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. Yeah. So 2020 just getting started and you're going to continue promoting Signature 3. Um, What else can we expect from uh, Taiwan? Definitely another uh, smooth blend project. That's going to, we're definitely going to do that in in 2020. Um, And probably an EP. Okay. I'm probably going to do an EP. Matter of fact, I've already finished an EP called Safe Word, and um, I'm just kind of kind of waiting. Okay. It's kind of waiting. So, it's a, for me, it's the you know how in the '90s you had all of that. You had baby making music. Yes. And everybody, you, you everybody used to love to, to ride around and. And they play slow jams all the time and all of that. And, you know, now it's something else. Uh-huh. So I'm just kind of going, kind of going back a little bit oh, and yeah. just wanting to do, wanting to do like a, a slow jam project and, and uh, get the baby making going again. <laughs> I'm sure that'd be greatly appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'm in California. Is any uh, any plans to uh, come out here and promote or tour or? What's I'm up? hoping so. I'm, I'm hoping so. Um, my team is definitely working on on some things. Um, 
I'm hearing about some some shows that are, that are coming up, so um, definitely trying to map out, you know, what's what's the best course of action for for myself, and um, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for you too, man. Because this is a great uh, great music you're putting out. Um, now there was something else I was wanting to ask you, but it just slipped my mind. Sorry about that. Um, it's okay. Oh, I was going to ask you now. How can people uh, reach out to you? I know I found you on Facebook, but how can people uh, reach out to you? I know your music is on Amazon, but where other where where else can people pick up your music? You can you can actually get it anywhere digital music is sold. Okay. So um, any of the the streaming services, um, you can get it on Spotify. It's on Amazon Music. It's on Apple Music. It's on iTunes. Um, the Amazon actual Amazon store you can get out of the Google Play store um, Tidal uh, iHeart Radio picked it up um, so you can you can pretty much hear it any, anywhere Pandora you can, you can hear it everywhere uh, digital music is so okay are you still on Napster or absolutely Napster too really <laughs> okay all yep. right okay uh, and you're on social media. Um, you have a website or anything, uh, Ty? Actually, so you you can you can find um, a lot of my social media stuff. Like um, my Facebook is just basically Taiwan. So you can catch you can catch me under under Taiwan, which is spelled T Y J U A N. Um, same thing for Twitter. So it's you know Twitter.com forward slash Taiwan T Y J U A N. Um, on Instagram, it is I am Taiwan. It's I am Taiwan on Reverb Nation. Okay. And if you're um, if you're listening or if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Bring Back Soul Music TV, we'll have links in the show notes to all of Ty's uh, links where you can pick up his music and find out more information about Ty. Um, so Ty, I really appreciate you taking the time today. Anything else you want to add before we uh, kind of lose today? If you if you haven't gotten it yet, definitely go out get that signature three. I promise you're gonna like if if you, if you I'll say this. I promise you're gonna like most of it. Like if you you might find one song that that might not be your cup of tea, but I promise you the most most of it you like. Okay, and one more quick question, man. Uh, I just I can't because my wife was uh, I was telling my wife I was interviewing you today, and I showed her your picture. He looks just like Heavy D. Do you get that comparison? <laughs> <laughs> you get that comparison a lot. You know what's funny? Um, yeah, yeah, Ashley, yeah. Um, I've been thin most of my whole life, and um, after probably about about 2015, I started, you know, putting on a lot of weight, and I remember going into a. Um, a meeting with uh, Slip and Slide, which is a, a label out of Miami, and um, the the lady that I was talking with said, "You look like Heavy D." Uh-huh. And I was like sitting there, like, "What?" <laughs> and I was like, "No, that's not that's not the." Uh... And she was like, "No, so Heavy D was fly," and I was like, "No, nah, I mean it's not that. It's just." You know, Heavy D was like a, a hip hop artist, right? So, you know, I don't want to run and really be seen like that. So, but my style is kind of um, as far as image wise, it looks a lot. It looks a, a little hip hop ish. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, I mean, I get it. I definitely get that all the time, and, and that's why I've last year I started changing up everything and just really, you know, focusing on the grown the grown man side of it and, and you know leaving that other kind of leaving that other stuff I do I hear you I hear you yeah my wife said well he looks just like Heavy D oh yeah he kind of <laughs> do resemble Heavy D <laughs> the late great Heavy D so yeah. alright Ty appreciate you taking the time today sir uh, thanks for coming on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast Look out Absolutely, for, man. It's been yeah, look out for Taiwan. Uh, Signature Three is an awesome album. Pick it up and put it in your collection. Uh, I heard it. I got it. You won't be disappointed. Taiwan, thank you.
Thank you for joining the show today. Thank you again for having me, man. It was an absolute pleasure. All right. Thank you, Taiwan. That's Taiwan on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Ty Wan. You can find out more about Ty on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget to connect with us on social media. You can also listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Join us next week for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Taking us home today is Taiwan and another song from his Signature 3 CD. This is called When I Found You. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. It's not always easy for me to express myself. I decided to reach out to you and tell you how I feel. Hope that you feel the same. I found a good thing when I found you Look what you've done You brought out the sun Smile at me, everything's in harmony. Lady, I'm so blessed. The day that you said yes, you changed my life for always. I'm gonna love you always. It don't get no better. I won't switch up ever. You got me forever and ever. Do you feel the same? Cause I feel the same.